Welcome to the Mike White Podcast, where I, Mike White, share my conversations and book reviews through my journey to learn all that goes on in this amazing world. Buckle up and enjoy the ride. If you're a regular listener of the podcast, you can support the show and help us grow by listening on Fountain, an awesome podcast app on iOS or Android. You can share your thoughts on this episode or simply say thanks by sending some sats with a comment. This is called the boost. Getting started is easy. You can top up your fountain wallet with a bank card or any lightning wallet. Oh yeah. And you can earn sats just by listening on fountain and being an active member of the community. Visit fountain.fm to learn more. Before we kick off the episode here, I wanted to shout out the boost on fountain. Thank you. I got 95 sats, nine, five sats boosted from user seven, one, eight, two, zero, six. 354-894-1062. And then another 95 sats from at JPC underscore BTC. Found's a really cool app. Trade value for value. Uh, thank you guys so much. Enjoy the show. All right. We're back on the Mike White podcast. And I've got a fellow Bitcoiner here on the other end. Uh, met Jeff in Miami uh, at the Bitcoin conference. A little uh, informationist meetup that the newsletter that James Lavish writes. And uh, we got to know each other for a little bit, exchanged Twitter bios and been uh, following each other's tweets for the last few months. But uh, it's good to, good to talk to you in person, Jeff. Yes, th- thanks thanks for having me on, Mike. I think I had a, I invited myself here, but I do appreciate you taking the time to have me on to have this conversation. Oh, definitely. This is like the reason I made this podcast is to hear different people's stories. And uh, it's turning into more of a Bitcoin thing because i I'm super fascinated by Bitcoin. I think it's one of the, it is the most revolutionary technology to, or just thing in my lifetime that I've seen. Um, I don't know if you feel the same way, but uh, any any Bitcoiner that wants yeah. to come on here has open invitation. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, as we were talking offline a second ago, you know, I, when, when you and I met in Miami, uh, unfortunately I was, I was doing too many things at once and I didn't get a chance to to sit down and talk to you. And then, serendipitously, you know, we got into conversations on Twitter months later and I didn't put the two and two together until a little while later, I clicked on your link or something. I looked, I go, Oh, I met that guy. I'm like, it was funny because we kind of met each other completely independently on, on different topics. But, uh, but yeah, but after, after you and I were talking and I, I felt was having a good conversation on Twitter, the 280 characters was, uh, was seemed a little limiting to me. So for, for, for these nuanced conversations, I thought it'd be best if we just had a conversation because you, you had a lot of great ideas and, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll say you you remind me of a younger self of my of myself. So, <laughs> oh well, thank you. Yeah, I, I enjoy yep. reading your tweets and also our, our exchanges. So, I, I want to let people know uh, a little bit more about yourself here and just what your your background is and and how sure. you got into Bitcoin. Sure, I'm a I'm a physician. I'm an ear, nose, and throat doctor. Um, during during COVID, you know, during the lockdowns. I was um, around the house a lot more than I have been in many, many years. Uh, close neighbors who I'm close friends with, their son was going to Columbia at the time. He's grad- since graduated, and you know he wanted to do a uh, he wanted to do a stock club. And I said I, I don't really know much about stocks. The only company I ever followed uh, was Tesla, and I said I can talk to you about that. I can talk to you about that for hours if you wanted to. And then um, so our meetings evolved, and uh, we decided through those meetings that we would you know. The three it was his father and myself and his, his dad's a very accomplished CFO. He's, he's been part of really large corporations. And but anyway, um, we decided that uh, the three of us concluded that um, we were in a um, we were in another technological revolution. You know, like agricultural industrial revolution. And and we we said you know it's, it's very hard for people once when they're in that type of situation. Like people weren't sitting around saying you know we're in the agricultural revolution right now. It's just what you know our industrial revolution. It, it was something historians went back and label, but we we all felt that you know that my my one his his he's in a, a, a SaaS company, um, you know, so he he saw what technology was doing, and so we said we just focus on technologies. Um, uh, during that during that that summer and fall, uh, someone approached me outside with some um, some sort of cryptocurrency for for medicine or something, and I was like, hey, "What are you talking about?" So he he's, he's he pitched it to me and I went back to our little meeting 
And I said to my, my neighbor, you know, the, the, the father, I said, uh, you know anything about crypto or Bitcoin? He's just like, yeah, it's all about, you know, hookers and drug dealers. I'm like, right? <laughs> we just completely blew it off. And it just so happens that um, ARK Invest came out with a white paper on Bitcoin right around that time. This was uh, fall of 2020. And I read it. And I was like, this is extremely interesting. I went back to my buddy the next week. So we were meeting weekly at that point. And, and I, I said to him, you know, I, I want to go back to this, this Bitcoin blockchain thing. And he's like, I, I'm not supposed to say anything about it. I, I signed a, uh, you know, a non-disclosure, but here's some information on blockchain and, and an investment opportunity. And then, then I think my Bitcoin path went with most Bitcoiners. And I went down the whole altcoin path and just getting blown away by the technology um, and what the possibilities were. You know, and that was what, three or four years ago now? Um, yeah. But, you know, the, the more I, you know, and then I read, you know, I read the um, uh, standard and then I found, uh, you know, Sailor and then I found Jeff Booth and then I read The Price of Tomorrow and then, you know, went through Breedlove and, and read The Sovereign Individual and The Fourth Turning and, you know, just the, the, the kind of thing, the typical path that a lot of, a lot of Bitcoiners go down. Um, but bring me around to you. I don't really think, and this took me probably until this only occurred to me six months ago. My my Bitcoin journey started when I I'm going to date myself now, 1986, 1987. Um, I had a, um, I think you and I exchanged this on Twitter. I had a um, I had a geometry professor, um, Herb Grossman, um, and I remember during the course of the year that was like a sophomore, junior in high school. During the course of the year, he took myself and a couple other people aside and he said you know you guys you guys really should um you know should learn a little bit about the world and how it works and he's like there's this and he goes i want you to read this book um by ayn rand um you know i was 15 16 years old i want you to read this tell me what you think you know and it was like after class and you know we're doing geometry but after class what'd you read what'd you think you know and it just the whole you know the whole meritocracy theme just made so much sense to me you know in that in that time in that age um and then there was a um uh, there was a, a retreat that, and I was, I was, I did not have a lot of money growing up, you know, so it was like, I had to be able to, my parents had to drive me there or whatever, but it was a retreat. It was like a weekend retreat and I went there and it was supposed to, it was called like the young entrepreneurs club or something, but it was, it was run by what I think was the Atlas society. Now in retrospect, I think that was something that the Atlas society was promoting in Northern Jersey. And long story short, as I'm going through my more recent journey, I'm reading all this and I keep thinking about Herb Grossman, who I haven't thought about in 30 plus years. <laughs> and uh, and I said, I said, Grossman would have loved this. So I, st- I, I went in search of him through all the social media sites. And unfortunately, he passed away a few years ago. Um, and I sent the message out. And one of his like, I don't know, his daughter or something like responded to me. And it was great. She was like, did you know that my dad actually knew Ayn Rand? I was like, what? I was like, what? He's like, yeah, I liked, you know, because he was a, uh, Herb was, um, once he was a Polish Jew, I believe. But anyway, when she came to the country, she had a problem with with a speech barrier. She was Russian, but he spoke Russian. And then he he taught her, and and they knew each other, like, like literally knew each other. I was like, like, holy crap. I'm like, that's, um, so, so long story short, um, you know, that's really, you know, from a hard money standard, where where my where my bitcoin philosophy comes from um yeah so so that's what got me to thinking about him and then you you were on twitter you know and you're and you're quoting a lot of iron rand i'm like i'm like this is a young guy man he's quoting iron rand i'm like that's pretty cool yeah luckily i mean i i found her very early think my dad uh had all her books so I, i was reading it as a teenager and it's definitely super influential but that makes me wonder uh in your story how you said you started down like the crypto rabbit hole and uh, yep. all these other altcoins and then more and more Bitcoin only. And mm-hmm. yep. my thoughts on that is it, it's a hard jump to make if you don't have the sound money uh, kind of background or value sound money, hard money. And I guess it's kind of like the Austrian economic background. Is that mm-hmm. something that influenced you or how did you make, kind of make the jump? You know, it must have influenced me without knowing it, you know. Um, I, I just think having, you know, having had that kind of just underlying belief system that you know that, that made sense to me because you know whatever the narrative is, it's got to make sense to you. It's not going to make sense to everybody. It just it appealed to me even as a young man. Um, 
so, but I'm a technologist too. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm 52 years old. Um, I think I'm probably in the older side of most people that would be involved in Bitcoin. You know, I know, I know looking at my friends, my colleagues, you know, people in my age category, but, but I've always embraced that type of stuff. And I've always, I've always kind of enjoyed technology. Um, so I just got wrapped up in the blockchain technology. I'm like, this is, this is revolutionary. But what I, the gap that I was missing that I didn't know that I didn't learn from Ayn Rand that I didn't learn from medical school or didn't learn from just my own geekiness, um, was just what money is. Um, and that's, that's a, that, that I think would had to answer your question. I think what, what the bridge was, was doing a lot of, of, um, reading and learning about money and what it is, you know what I mean? Really understanding the concept uh, of money. And I think, you know, Sailor, I took his, I took Sailor University course on Bitcoin and money, the Rob Breedlove series. Um, but at the same time, while I'm, while I'm doing all this, I'm also listening to Gensler's MIT. I took the MIT course, <laughs> uh, you know, so, so I'm yeah. hearing it, you know, so, so I'm, I'm, go, I'm doing all these things. Um, but, but there's, you know, there's been a ton of, of aha moments where I'm like, I'm like, you know, very like, whoa, okay. You know? Um, and I have to remember this when I'm talking to other people, it, it's, it's a long process. I mean, I've done, and, and when I say I've done this work, I've done the work. I've enjoyed it. I've totally thoroughly enjoyed it. You can talk to my wife. I've got these earbuds in whenever I'm not at work, I'm working on the yard, I'm driving, I'm at the grocery store. I'm listening to podcast after podcast. I'm reading book after book. I just find it very interesting. And I know a lot of people just don't. So answering your question, yeah, I, I, my bridge was what was money, you know, and I would not claim that I fully grok it yet because I think it's, it's, a, it's extremely um, fundamental concept to civilization. Um, yeah, there's a long answer yeah. to your question. <laughs> no, that's great. And, and you're, I think that shows like kind of inherent curiosity that you almost have to have. And cause a lot of people just kind of brush it off and don't dive in, but it seems like you're mm -hmm. uh, just naturally uh, pretty curious. Have you found like talking to colleagues, what like a main pushback is that where they just brush it off and they don't dive in? Yeah, I'm still working on that angle. Um, you know, once, um, once I started to, to, to scratch the surface of Bitcoin, um, you know, I, I like, I think like many just shot out of a cannon trying to tell anyone like, Hey, this is what you got to do. Um, and then what I'm, coming to the conclusion that I got to take a step back and start just educating people or trying to, if they want to listen, um, just about the current system. Um, I think that's even more important at this point than trying to convince them that Bitcoin is what they should be doing with their money. Um, um, so yeah, so, and, and that's where I've spent a lot of my time, um, you know, just talking to a bunch of, bunch of friends texting right now, just going back and forth with some, some Bitcoiners. Um, you know, the, 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 the common misunderstanding is that everyone knows what you know, you know, and they don't, I didn't, I mean, I, I had no idea. My, like I said, my buddy is a very successful guy, you know, he's, um, and he said, you know, Jeff, I was 49 before, and he's, I'm a CFO of a billion dollar company. I, I didn't know what money was till I was 49. I mean, I had no concept, never even thought about it. Never thought when I swiped a credit card or put money in a bank or made a transaction what that really meant. Right. And that's, I mean, that's, that's a fundamental aha moment. And it's, it's hard to, to tell someone that in a 10 minute, what, you know, Oh, you're the Bitcoin guy. Tell me about it. You know, I'm like, Oh Jesus. I'm like, that's a tough, that's a, that's a tough sell, you know? And um, yeah, so that's a, that's kind of what I've been trying to do is just to educate people to, you know, where we're at right now. Um, and, and I think with that understand, or at least get them, how about this, get them interested, right? Cause you can't do it for them, right? You can't, you can't, you, you can't, you can lecture and lecture and lecture, but they gotta, they gotta understand it. You know, the, the Satoshi line. Yeah. And uh, those questions like the, what is money is such a big question. That's why uh, it's great. Sense. What, what breed love did with uh, the sailor series. And then yep. uh, safe Adine covers that in the Bitcoin standard. And now Lynn Alden's book, I just started that, but that's, she's approaching it of the, what is money? Like why? And then based on this, the first principles aspect, if this is what we need, this is what function it needs to serve what is the best tool that can do that? Mm -hmm. yep. And that's where I go to Bitcoin. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Uh, same. And I mean, you know, I, I maybe, I don't know what your, what is your background? Like what is your. More like a. Uh, en oh, engineering. Yeah. Nu nuclear power plant kind of stuff, but I did it like electrical yeah. engineering in college and yeah, stuff like that. So, 
So I'm, I'm, I'm no engineer, but I definitely have that more engineering thought process, educational background. So I immediately um, understood, or how about this? I mean, Sailor's presentation was um, appealing to me, right? Like it made sense. It, he was speaking my language. I got it. Um, talking about thermodynamics, I'm like, of course, you know, it makes sense. Um, but but since then, and I still listen to Sailor. Anytime the guy puts something out, he always got a twist. And I think he's a genius. But I also try to listen to to other. You know, I don't know if you've done any like Gigi. Look at any of his stuff. Um, also looking at Gladstein's stuff from a human rights standpoint. Um, yeah. You know, looking at money as a form of communication, uh, which Sailor has alluded to, but Musk has used that term, the ledger concept, a lot. There's just there's just a lot of different ways, and that's. If and when I get to the people, some people, because I have, I, have, I, have I have a few who I have that aren't <laughs> filled, um, you know, I just I kind of try to take them along the path that I think is most appealing to them. Um, I got one of one guy that I work with, you know, he definitely um, and I hate to use the terminology, but he's more on the left side of the of the spectrum than the right side, um, um, which should be irrelevant, but it is not. Um, but anyway, I, I got him to read um, a progressive case for Bitcoiners. I was like, read this. And that was his, that was, he didn't do Bitcoin stand. Like for him, I was, he's like, what? He's like, I'm going to give you one shot. He's like, I got a small <laughs> young family. I'm an anesthesiologist. You get one shot. I go, read this. And he read it. And, uh, and he's, he's all in, man. He's just like, he's like, he's like, you ruined it for me. I'm like, yep. You see everything now, <laughs> don't you? He's like, yeah, pretty much. So, so, you know, yeah, I think, I think just meeting people where they're at with it um, because the, you know, the, the TAM of money is everyone Period. I mean, just, just, it just, it's, it's every human on earth. It, there is, there is no preferential group that needs it more or less than another. That's nonsense, you know? Um, but not everyone needs it for the same thing. Yep. Um, so, so you have to kind of, you know, appeal to them that it's important to you. I don't know you, but I know you need it. You know, so, you, so best, you, yeah, best you learn about it. It's for everyone. And I've, I've noticed on Twitter, like there's a lot of things I disagree with, with, with mm -hmm. Bitcoiners. And, but mm -hmm. when it comes to money, it, it really doesn't matter. Like, I think everyone realizes this will make their life better. Like there's not mm -hmm. one single person, unless you're a thief and unless mm -hmm. you want to take money from people by force, mm -hmm. Bitcoin's for you. Yeah. Um, and even, even, even if they want to, you know, that's, that's okay. That's human nature. You know, people wanting something for less is just inherent i think in the human condition um and what have we done as civilizations we've we've tried to perfect that storage of value to protect it one of the things is to protect it right i mean arguably i mean very arguably it's the reason we have governments is to protect property rights that's their primary purpose on yeah. earth they always fill a vacuum they, they'll always be governments i'm not an anarchist although i've listened to a lot of compelling discussions but actually the true really thoughtful anarchists they, they're, they're not for like everyone runs around naked, you know what I mean? Doing whatever they want. That, that's not what true anarchy is. But, um, but back to my point, um, you know, y y governments are there to protect your property rights and the more efficient the money is, the tool is right. Then the less you need that, you know what I mean? Like, I don't need anyone to protect my stuff. I don't, you don't have to protect my home state. You don't have to protect my gold. You have to protect, I, I got that. I got it inside my head. So it's, it's safe. Trust me, you know, which yeah. is, you know, what a technological breakthrough and just the massive inefficiencies like that would get rid of for ev everything every single industry would be operating way more product uh, productively another thing on your story i wanted to touch on is so you're saying you're these p these people you're talking to they seem uh like you're having really good conversations and you're you're meeting with them periodically mm -hmm. it sounds like maybe even once a week have you mm -hmm. always done that throughout your life and like what kind of no. started that no no i haven't um so I, I really do, I, it has, I mean, Bitcoin has really changed a lot of things about myself. And this is by no means to claim that I know everything about medicine, but if you can adopt the S curve of, of, you know, technologies, yeah, I was up towards the top from a medical standpoint. I mean, I, I, there's still things I learned. I go to conference, I read stuff, but the, the, the vast stuff, like the really, like when I was a medical student and a resident, I mean, the amount, it was like drinking from a fire hose. I really enjoyed yeah. that because I am I'm generally a curious person. Um, and I thought, I thought that those days were past me until the fall, you know, the summer of 2020. I was like, I, I, and, and not just the technological, you know, the blockchain technology, just economics, governance, history, religion. Um, I just became very much more interested. I, I short story, um, when I was little, I don't know if they did it when you were a kid, they had like baby books. You know what I mean? Like your parents like put down stuff like his first block, his first word, his first. So 
Jeff's first toy was um, this piggy bank thing. We took money and you put it in and it would, would go down these like little trails and they would stack them somewhere. I was like, what? you weren't even supposed to give a kid coins, but I loved it. So, and you know, the joke in my family has always been like, Jeff always only cared about money. You know, and that's why <laughs> Jeff has money because he only cared about it. But the, there was a part of me that was like, and I didn't know it's I found Bitcoin. I'm like, it's more than that. It's, I just, I just had like this inherent, like it's important, but I didn't know why. Like, I just, you know, like, sure. I like a nice car, I like to go on a nice vacation, but I was like, there's something deeper than that. I was like, there's something at a different level that appealed to me. And as I'm going down the rabbit hole, I'm like, it's, it's, it's all self credit. It's all self pat myself in the back. I'm like, I knew it was important. <laughs> I just didn't know the, I didn't have the words for it, you know? Um, yeah. So, so back to your question, did I do stuff like this? No, I was never I mean, I was passionate about medicine. I'm passionate about my family, but I've never been passionate about anything before. Um, I have a, my brother is a devout Jehovah's witness. I, I'm not, I'm not I'm a, what you would call a religious person, but about two years into Bitcoin, I sent him, um, I, I, I talked to him. I said, now I know why you do Bible study so much. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, well, there's a lot of layers to it, right? Like, and I'm like, I could listen to 50 podcasts about what is money. I'm like, and I'm going to pick up a little bit each time. I'm like, I get it now. I'm like, okay. I'm like, enjoy your Bible study. I'm like, that's great. And I think it's huge to bounce off ideas from people. And because you listen, I, I do the same thing. I'm always listening to podcasts and I have all this in my brain, mm -hmm. but I also mm -hmm. want to be able to explain the ideas and then talking yeah. to people, explaining it. And then they'll, they'll point out blind spots that, you don't, I don't realize, and it yep. helps me formulate and really conceptualize better. And I think it's something like if wherever you're at, you can find, uh, it doesn't even have to be like a Bitcoin meetup, but just mm -hmm. find people that want to discuss ideas. And it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's huge. Awesome. Yeah, it's great. I, I agree. And uh, so you're talking about like what exactly it, it was, it wasn't just like the love of money that, that got you. Uh, where you are today type thing. It's, it's something more than that. You mentioned reading uh, Ayn Rand back uh, back in the day. You you recognize the theme of like being rewarded for uh, meritocracy. What uh, do you have any other thoughts of like what exactly is that driving force or or uh, is it meritocracy and and why is that a, a value? Um. So I mean, I, I guess. If I understand your question, um, yeah. so what's the best way to answer? So if you if you look at, I found also I, I've I've gotten a much more appreciation of history, um, and if you kind of look with with a with a uh, with a low time preference, um, what is important? You know, um, you know, you look at things from a civilizational standpoint, and you know the reason that you and I are talking like this which would have been unbelievable when I was in 1986. You know, I mean, this would have been completely Star Trek time, me and you talking, I don't even know where you are. <laughs> um, you know, um, these things are made possible by technology and, and technologies, obviously we're discussing Bitcoin, but technologies are clothing on our back, toothpaste, the, the, the floor we walk on. I mean, everything besides sitting naked in a field is technology, right? I mean, because when people hear technology today, they think of the next iPhone, but it's like, no, everything's a hammer of technology. So for me, um, the discovery, for my discovery, discovery Bitcoin, for the discovery of me <laughs> finding Bitcoin and then, and then kind of reverse engineering it to like why that is important, tied in with just a lot of, a lot of narratives that made sense to me, you know, from a younger age. But I, I think some of these things, I think some people are just a certain way, you know, like certain people are very artistic. Some people have a more uh engineering type thought process i mean we're all different which is a good thing it's not a bad thing you want that um so to me uh because because of the bitcoin rabbit hole it, it made sense to me why like ayn rand's um philosophies which by the way i don't agree with all of them i, I don't um but i agree with with the core the core belief system um but again, it, it's it's fundamental. Money is fundamental to that. Money is fundamental to all those things. Um, just because it's a technology that that we use to promote civilization. Um, so one one, and I don't know where I got this from. I'm probably stealing it from somebody, but um, maybe it was Sailor. 
But one one approach I'll take with some people, depending on their background, to to talk to them about Bitcoin is, you know, I start with the 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 the, the, the grabber, like what's more important in civilization, love or money? Um, you know, obviously the, the the right answer is love, but the true answer is money. I mean, you you can't have civilization without money. Period. And I, I, so I stir the pot with that first question, and then to kind of flesh it out, I say, look, how much do you think a can of beans costs in a grocery store? You know, I'll give you I'll give you it'll be multiple choice. Is it a dollar? Is it a hundred dollars? Is it a million dollars? Is it a hundred million dollars? I'd say I'd, I'd argue it's closer to hundred million dollars. Of course, they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, well, think about it. To get that can in your hand, that means some farmer had to grow it with extensive farming equipment. Then there had to be fertilizer involved. Then there had to be transportation involved. There had to be a cannery involved, which means metallurgy, which means a metal shop, which means roads, which means electricity, which, and, and which means paint and ink to go on a label. Then it has to come in a store. It has to, I was like, to get that can in your hand costs hundreds of millions of dollars or whatever currency you want to refer to it as. Um, I wrote that That's the backbone. It's the backbone of everything. It's the backbone of the reason why you can love someone and go on a date with them, unless you want to sit naked in a field with them, because that's the other alternative. If you don't want the, the primary technological advancement of mankind, then you can take it all, the rest of all can go away. That's, that's one of my openers with some people. It works some wise, it works okay. Um, but then you can then you can kind of go off on on all the different aspects of of why those statements are true. You know, when I was when I was in med, one of the best things about medical school um, for me at least, for residency more than medical school even was the was was, was teaching critical thinking. The the um, the new catch term is first principles thinking. We weren't that wasn't a thing. It was just critical thinking. So. You, know, you, you just need to be able to, as an engineer, you can I'm sure, you know, relate to that. You know, you, when you're when you're posed with a problem, you, you just keep going to the next, you know, going down a step like, well, this is because of this. Well, why? Because of this and why? And then at some point, someone used a five rule. I don't know if it's Jeff Booth or someone, you know, you want to get down to something like because gravity, okay, or because of the speed of light or, you know, some, axioms. some axioms. Yeah, just, some, just some things that are like physically that's why and there, True, ain't, yeah. there is no other you know what i mean there's no other truism below that yeah um so yeah no and I've, and that that yeah. uh I've, that bean example just made me think of more how bitcoin is so perfect because you're, you're saying how much like dollars it costs but we could say how much yen is it how much bitcoin is it yeah. but the tr true thing is what matters is the energy like not just physical labor but the mental energy and like you said every person in that chain that had to spend their own their own energy to decide to create this product and that's why i love ayn rand and bitcoin so much both with ayn rand meaning uh one of her values is uh human flourishing right like productive achievement and it's human life is is like one of the ultimate values and in order to have life and a good life is is what what are you going to do with it like what where are you going to put your energy and bitcoin is that true connector of of receipts of those energy that everyone can have the same comparison the same ruler as they like to say whereas when you have the the fiat system and uh a ruler that keeps growing i don't see how you can function properly so i, I love that energy example yeah, I use the another one I've been used, well, I've, I've used in the past is just that, you know, money is just a measure of value. Right? I, 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 you know, the definition being uh, money is a tool to transport value over space and time. You know, that's that's kind of it's one of the more basic ones that I use initially. And the way I explain that to someone is I say, look, if I asked you, you know, how tall your grandfather was who lived in England, you know, seventy years ago, you go five foot, 10 inches or whatever centimeters, but you'd be able to give me a number, right? And I could compare them to my grandfather, right? Yeah. And then if I said, uh, you know, how much did he weigh or how old did he get before he died? I mean, these are, these are numbers that we could relate to one another. Now, if I said to you, how much did your grandfather in London make versus mine in Colombia? Did you do that? 
would you even be possible? I mean, it would be so many assumptions. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, I go, do you have anything that, again, I'm not speaking to you, I'm speaking to this person. I said, look, is there anything that you want to measure with more accuracy than your value? (laughs) <laughs> so why is that such a why is that such a random thing like why is that so and and and, and there, there's answers for that you know and if the person seems interested at that point i'm like i can explain why that that type of of abstraction has occurred um but it's just a ruler like you said it's a ruler for something what but it's a moving target and i go and you got to understand that it's hard to build a bridge or a building or a civilization or a government if one of the most important things that you need for that civilization is a moving target. Um, so yeah, so that's, again, a couple of the, the, the approaches I've made with people in the past with mixed results. Did, did results. it, yeah. Did you have, did you ever think about inflation prior to Bitcoin? Was that on no, your mind? I, no, I used to think, I used to think inflation was like gravity. I did. I, I thought it was just, I thought it was just a fact. Um, and coming from my background, the more and more I learn about CPI and managers, whatever metrics they use, I mean, my God, if medicine was conducted this way, we, we would all be dead at 30. <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. I mean, it, it's just, it's literally, it is so um, subjective. It's crazy. Like you, you, you would not build an airplane with this type of information. You know what I mean? And, and, and. I, I mean, obviously, planes are important, bridges are important, but my God, uh, to, to steer the entire world economy based on these on this data is is ludicrous. So, no, answer your question. No, I had no idea what inflation was, and you know, the more I learn about it, I learn that there's a lot of nuance there, and there's a lot of ways of describing it. But I mean, to think that you can base massive decisions on one number. I mean, what was Sailor's last thing? He's just like, it's like asking someone what the temperature in America is. You know, it's like, what's the temperature? You're like, where in America? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> that's what. That's what basically CPI is. It's like it's inflation. Where in America? For everybody. You're like what? Just big, my, my mother's inflation rate is nowhere near my twenty year old daughter in Miami's inflation rate. Trust me, they, they don't. They don't shop at the same place. They don't live in the same buildings. So it's just it's absurd. Now and that every know, now that now that I know more about it, I'm like, what a pile of crap that is. And every single person in every company, when they're making plans for different projects and all these investments, they have to think about that. And there's no, yeah, I don't know how you function. I'm in a, um, I'm in a group. I've brought a group of individuals together, a lot of different walks of life. One, one guy's a realtor, one guy owns a tree service. I'm a doctor, anesthesiologist, another guy's a lawyer and I've all brought them together. I've known them from different parts of my life. Um, I brought them together just because they're all Bitcoiners, but they're on different parts of the journey and they're got different views. But I would say a considerable amount of them. If you, if you, if I got them on the pod right now, they'd be like, you know, Jeff's a Bitcoiner, but but he he doesn't he thinks this thing's going to take a long time to unwind. They they are more this is ending, you know, in the near future. Um, where do you where, what are your thoughts on that? Just curious. Now I'm interviewing you. I apologize. It's your podcast, Mike. You can say, hey man, start your own podcast. So that's round questions. No, I, I definitely wanted to get your take on this as well. Like, what do you see the outlook of, you know, next couple of years, next five years? Uh, I I don't see a better replacement to the dollar. So I think they'll continue to debase it, continue to print. We'll have high inflation. I wouldn't say, I mean, relative, any any inflation is high inflation, but like yeah. probably closer to 10% than, than 2%. Um, yeah. But I don't know what it will take to the the suddenly thing because eventually it's going to break, but I don't think that's anytime soon just based on, on history. I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the hopeful camp and as a Bitcoiner, I am hopeful. That's another thing. I think when I'm talking to people, they're like, my God, doesn't this depress you knowing all this? I'm like, no, I'm actually very hopeful. Um, But I'm in the camp of of a slower transition uh, being what is required. I do think that it, that it's you know retail is important. Obviously, the core bitcoiners are important, but you know I'm 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 all in favor of BlackRock ETF. I'm all in favor of just getting more and more letting the Trojan horse into more and more places, um, so that it can bleed off value from the current system. Because there, there's a lot of building that needs to be done, and that's so so a lot of the the, the guys I'm talking to, you know, they're like, ah, 
you see what Bricks is doing, this and that. I'm like, they're not going to do anything. Um, not any other. Well, um, my my belief on it, you know, my belief is that you know we are we are although with flaws, we are the world reserve currency for a reason. The friction involved with transacting in U.S. dollars because of the systems that have been in place for 70 years um, just make it easier. I mean, talk to anyone out of the country who's trying to, you know, someone from South Africa wants to deal with someone in Nigeria. They're they're sending their they're, they are exchanging their money for U.S. dollars and then they're they're doing that. They're not they're not doing the rand to I can't even, I forget in Nigeria what the what the currency is, but. Yeah. Um, um, because there's just too much friction there. There's just way, way too much friction beyond what we understand here in the U.S. as being friction. We think one or two percent of the credit card is friction. That's nothing of what they'll bleed off from you going through intermediaries. Um, so I, I th and, and the other thing I will say is that I, the world has never seen um, a more intertwined, larger economy than exists today. Not like by far, like this dwarfs any empire. You can put them all together. I don't care. The Han Dynasty, put them with the Roman Empire, put them with the Greeks. The, the English, the Dutch, put it all together, and we're st and, and we still have the largest you know integrated environment economy man has ever known. Now it's built on a house of cards, which is scary as shit. Um, but we just need to get we just need to get the value bled slowly, and 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 with that, you know, the building that I believe is going on, um, just to enable it to work well, because right now, you know, the 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 UI, the user interface is is much less complex than it was a decade ago from what i'm told i've only been in space for but I, but it's still not there yet you know your your mom still can't get a cold wallet and change to a hot wallet you know maybe your mom can but but i mean it just it needs it needs to be seamless it needs to be like the internet right you know and, and mm -hmm. then you know you know again more of my analogies i tell my, my people i'm talking to i'm like look no one on earth can make a pencil you have no clue how, how a zipper works doesn't mean you can't use these technologies. You know what I mean? A zipper is a technology. You just use it every day and you think you know how it works, but you don't. You couldn't build one. And no human no human on earth can make a pencil. There's just too much involved there. Um, doesn't mean you can't write with a pencil. So so it's coming. You know, it's it's coming. And the reason that people, I believe, will use it is because it will be better, faster, cheaper. That's what technology does. There's no slower, more expensive, you know, technology that takes hold. Um, and, and good technology revolutionary technology doesn't need to be promoted mm -hmm. you don't you know you don't need to sell running water you don't need to sell electricity you need to sell a car to someone who's got a horse it just is it's just better you know but we we're not in my opinion we're just not there yet and the bitcoin network is not ready for prime time yet and what i mean by prime time it's just not ready to be the world reserve currency or asset it's just it, it, it's just not big enough um, you know, five hundred billion dollars is a spit in the bucket of the trillions of dollars of value that's on a world scale. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm no, I don't want to live through Mad Max. I don't want that system to collapse tomorrow because it'll get, because then it's just guns and food. <laughs> that that's yeah. not what I want. But I got when, a lot of people who, a lot of people think that that's the way we're going. That we're, you know, there's going to be worldwide war. I'm like, that's not going to be good. And when you say you don't think Bitcoin's ready. Are you more saying like the layer two solutions type medium of, medium of exchange? Yeah, well, a couple of things. Well, number one, I, I think that Bitcoin is in store value phase, which you know gold went through. It's well documented, um, so its market cap is not is, is such that it just it it can't handle sovereign wealth, right? I mean, there's no way someone's. I mean, any any sovereign, even small ones. I mean, El Salvador, you know doesn't count sorry but i mean like any g8 country move the needle so rapidly trying to you know put put something into bitcoin that it would and then that leads to the second problem is volatility understandably it's a in store of wealth it's going to be volatile you, you can't go from zero to to twenty five thousand dollars in 14 years or 11 12 years really um and not be volatile on the way up that's just impossible mm -hmm. so it has to get to a certain size in my opinion um you know in the multiple you know way i'd say beyond gold market cap honestly before it really starts to stabilize um and that's important it's, it's got to you know that's but it's a, it's a growth thing it just has to grow and then and then to what you said the layer of solutions you know just to get the i think that i i, I actually think that the tps that type of stuff that's that's simple to solve. That's that's easy to solve. That's going to come. You know, I mean, that lightning is already there. Um, 
I don't think that's as big. I think it's important. I think it's super, super important for adoption. And, and yet all these things work together. I don't, I don't think they're in a vacuum. I don't think it's like, well, once we get to this market, then we build layer two, then we do it. No, I think all these things have to happen. I think they, I think they organically have to work together to, to get to the end game. Um, but yeah, but I think it's a long process. I think it's a decades process. I don't think it's a years or a months process. Um, and I think, and I hope it, okay. yeah, that's definitely the, 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 the positive case, because if it happens suddenly right now, like you said, it would be madness in the streets. But if people can start shifting into Bitcoin right now and, and slowly realize that, hey, this is the life raft and eventually the dollar and it's not it's not Bitcoin doing this. It's not any person doing this. It's the the monetary policy itself is unsustainable. Eventually, the dollar is going to be more more volatile than Bitcoin and, and things would make more sense to be priced in Bitcoin than they will be in dollars and in uh, the future that I'm imagining. Um, in the in the in all the Bitcoiners I've met are skeptics first. I've never, you know, obviously some people have more enthusiasm for it than others. Um, but they all started as a skeptic. And I think Bitcoin needs to be anti-fragile. I encourage all the attacks upon it. I want to see, I want to see sovereigns come after it. I want to see Wall Street come after it. I want to see the grifters come and go. I want to see the FTXs of the world. It needs to all happen. If it's what, what I think it is to be, it, it can't, man can't disrupt it. It has to be TikTok next block. It can't be interrupted. So you got to keep going. With that assumption being made, you know, and that's a big assumption, but assuming that it can continue as it has been all these years, um, then then the other hurdle, the concern I have um, is adoption. You know, it's just, it's just people understanding what it is. And unfortunately, uh, in this country, in this country, um, we're not there yet. It, things aren't bad enough yet. Um, they're getting there, um, but they're not bad enough yet. Um, and what I've been trying to do in my small way is just, you know, just talking and listening to people, you know, particularly younger people. Uh, if I ever get in a setting, because I'm, I'm the crazy Bitcoin guy, when, whenever, <laughs> you know, whenever I enter a room, like, oh, God, here he comes. Um, but, you know, I, you know, they, you know, young people starting out say it's so hard to get a house. I'm like, you want to know why? I mean, honestly, do, do you want to know why? I, I was at a wedding a couple months back. And um, it's a young couple. They have young children. They, they do have a house, but, you know, they did everything they could to get in that house. Um, and, you know, it's, oh, I know it's a whole Bitcoin thing with you. I was like, well, let's take it back a notch. I'm like, because they're Italian, not, not to disparage, but I'm like, I'm like, let me guess. Your grandparents gave you treasury bills for your children. And they're like, yeah, like, what the frick <laughs> is that all about? I'm like, when I was a kid, that was good as gold. I mean, that was it. And I go, and then I said, do you know what that is? I'm like, do you know what a treasury is? I didn't. I'm not, I'm not trying to be Mr. Smarty Pants. I didn't know what it was three years ago. If you asked me, I'd be like, I don't know. You know, yeah. I'm like, it's an IOU. That's it. I'm like, it's an IOU. You just got an IOU from the U.S. government. They'll pay you back a certain amount of money in X amount of years, and we'll pay you a little vig on the side for for lending us that cash. That's all it is. I'm like, I was like, and I'm like, you want the kicker? The whole world is built on those. The whole economic system on Earth is built on IOUs, and and like, it, it, most people at that point are just like, what? I'm like, mm -hmm. like, do you want to know where money comes from? Do you want to know where your mortgage comes from? Do you want to know where that's all I use. That's all it is. And, you know, and then, you, you know, you, sometimes you open people's eyes. Some people, look, man, I got a family to raise. I got young kids. I got to just get to work, make money. I'm like, I get it. I totally get it. I get why you, you know, you don't want to think about stuff like that. It's, you know, but at some point, I think you're going to have to, you know. You're going to have to because inflation, it's, it's going to, I don't know. Yeah. You see the debt. You see the debt clock running and it's just insane. Like, how, how is this? possible to sustain <laughs> I, I i've talked to i have talked to a significant number of very wealthy people um and when it gets to the point of the conversation where i say so how does that work out i haven't gotten one answer not one no nope. it's a cycle you know we cycle it goes up it goes down i'm like okay so look at the debt how does that end i mean we are insolvent right i mean like we're never paying that back you realize 33 trillion dollars on you know an annual gdp of you know what are we at what's the gdp of the u.s was last year was like seven trillion or something like that i'm like so if you took everything from everybody i'm like 
you pay a quarter of it off. But remember, no one's eating at that point or living or buying clothing. But so how, what? I'm like, so we're never paying it off. I mean, I guess you can go the technological route. You know, if we have some major technological advancement that increases product, you know, productivity, the GDP is just productivity times people. That's it. You know, how much yeah. they work and how much they produce. So, okay. So, all right. So we have some earth shattering. We discover, you know, free energy um, and AI does everything for everybody. Um, okay. I mean, that's, again, I'm a technological guy. I, I, I like the future. I think there's a lot of great things there, but I'm like, I think we crossed the Rubicon on that one. But okay. And then the other one is just inflate dead away. That's to me, those, are the, you know, I tell people, the, again, smart people, smart people. By this time, they're usually rolling their eyes and tell me I'm an asshole. But I'm like, no, I'm just, I'm like, hey, those are the two out. Those are, that's it. It's either make it not worth as much, right? Just print the trillion dollar dollar and just pay it off with that. And, or, or we have some major leap forward in technology to increase GDP of every man, woman, and child in the country. And I'm thinking about this um, off the cuff, so I don't know how good of uh, analysis this is. But even if we do have great leaps in productivity and we pay off the debt, you still have, like, it's just borrowing for future future earnings right now. So ultimately, more more of that money will be circulating in this I think it seems it seems to me like more would be circulating and you still have higher inflation. Um and that's that's like the best case scenario assuming they can get back to a you know no deficit. Well, going to a higher going to a higher level on that um you know and what I really like to talk to bitcoiners about. Um so so we live in a credit-based economy. So the reality is we don't want to pay back the debt. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to just explain a credit-based economy. Not that I agree with it, but the whole yeah. point of a credit-based economy is that it is based on debt, right? So you, you always want debt. That's why deflation is the ultimate kryptonite for, for the fiat system, right? You can't have the, if like, if you're like, you showed up at the bank tomorrow and you're like, all right, banker, Jeff, I want a $500,000 house and I've, I've saved up $50,000 and my, and I go, okay, man, great. And I get, and you give me your 50,000 and I give you, I lend you $450,000. If your house is, house is worth four hundred thousand dollars the next year, you're screwed. You're underwater, right? Yeah. If it goes down to two fifty. You're you're dude. You're SOL, man. You're in deep doo doo because now you you're holding debt. You hold you owe them four hundred fifty thousand dollars on a two hundred fifty thousand dollars asset. S- scale that to the world. Yeah, it's like it's it's insane, you know. So so you're right productivity like is it would it be great if we paid down the debt yeah but how, like that wouldn't be good because those debts are what we base our entire monetary system on right so it's it's um it's kind of a, it's kind of an interesting conundrum right? we should ask that one to lavish if yeah. we could theoretically pay like the gdp went through the roof right like if everyone started being more productive and the debt goes down what would happen because that's that's deflation right that's mm-hmm technically what that is right you, you, you pay down the debt everything gets cheaper hmm, i think it's a bad thing in the fiat system it's, you know this is, this is where i start to go dude it's like bizarro world <laughs> like, what? Like, what yeah it doesn't need to be this way you could just have a, a stable fix you, you don't need a growing supply of money just there's no no reason like i could see the reason if you couldn't divide gold or like say you're using gold and eventually there's so much production that you need smaller and smaller units and it would be difficult to do that. Um, but now it's in the digital world, you just add, add some zeros and go further and further down the decimal place. Yeah. I've spent, I spent a lot. I, I, I do, I do listen to a lot of people talk about, you know, elasticity of money and the importance of that in a growing economy. And I get it to a degree. I, you know, here's the thing. And this is where you and I were when we were going back and forth on Twitter, because, and I get where you're coming from. You're a young guy, you know, um, but there is, there is nuance there. I mean, it's not like an all or none world. You know, I don't think going back 100% swinging the pendulum to a hard money standard makes sense um, for certain things, right? For certain things, you know? Um, So I think that people will want to be able to buy things on credit. I just, I just think that the leverage involved for that, and this 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 is where I get into the decades discussion because it's baked into to, to everyone at this point that it's okay to be leveraged, you know, fifty x or something like that. That's just that's normal, right? Like if you own a home, 
and a car and you've got a mortgage and a car payment and your kids are going to college. So those are those are liabilities, unfunded liability. I mean, if you really look at it, people kind of just accept that. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's that's fiat think that we can't help. We're swimming in that water. We're swimming in that system. And I have not gotten to Jeff Booth level yet. I'm just completely getting out of that thinking. But I think I think Lynn does a good job. Um, um, and I haven't read her book, but it's on my list. Um, but I've, I've listened to a lot of the talks she's given on it, you know, and, and kind of a somewhere in the middle. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you still have you still have loans, um, you know, you still but but instead you 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 do loans based on something that you think is going to actually, you know, outpace the rate of increase of the value of the Bitcoin. Right. Yeah. Um, oh. you know. Yeah, I, something, so it's, got, it's got to be something good. You're not like going to take, you're not going to leverage up on whatever Doge, you know, on, on Bitcoin to go buy some Dogecoin. I mean, like, why would you, why would you let that? That's such a risky thing that like, like, you know, it's just, no, risky. I, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that's, that's not what I would say. I, I definitely hmm. uh, think there's going to be credit and lending in, even in a hard money standard. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just thinking, I, that's another thing. I don't think credit means you are raising the money supply i think ultimately once you default in a hard money system think people go bankrupt if you default and you know there's someone left with the asset but it's not like a, a fiat system where if you default oh we'll just print more money and and subsidize your loss to everyone and everyone takes a hit um so that's that's what yeah, i was she, talking she about when I first started listening to Lynn Alden, I only got about 10% of what she was talking about. I think I'm up to about 60% right now. So one of the interesting concepts she was putting out there on this, on this thought thread um, was durational loans, um, you know, and as an alternative to fractional banking. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm going to do this poorly. So my Lord, I hope the woman never sees this. <laughs> um, but I, and she won't, <laughs> but, but, um, um, so, so basically the concept as I understood it was that, you know, you would come for some loan and it would be like, okay, it's for three months. You know what I mean? And at the end of three months or six months or whatever the agreed time period was, those assets are going to be locked into that. And then on the other end of that, the people that are, that are, that are giving those Bitcoin for loans are fully understood that this money is is not accessible during this window of time. And if it's one month, I'll give you one, per, and I'm just making it, if it's one, per, one, one month, it's 1% of your, you'll get 1% interest. If it's 10 years, it's gonna be 25%, you know what I mean? So, but durational loaning, um, duration loans versus um, versus just the the creation of the money, if, that, if, if, if I'm making sense with that. So you, you do have a way to lend in that system, but it's completely different than the banking that you and yeah. I or our parents or grandparents ever ever lived through, right? We've always had fractional banking because of the technical limitations of gold, right? I mean, you, you, you know, it was it was it, it evolved logically to where we are. I think. No, yeah, I definitely uh, think that's everyone should pick up Lynn Alden's book and and read. She has some great insight. Um, but uh, Jeff, this is great, great talking to you and, and hearing your story. Is there any final takeaways on uh, on Bitcoin you want to? say no no um no i really appreciate you uh having me on sir if i talk too much but i i did enjoy talking it's fun talking to other bitcoiners you know you can skip over some of the preliminary stuff and just get to the heart the meat of the talk you know no definitely uh, one, you, you you're a well-read guy but the one thing i think we've gone back and forth on read um read software it's uh it's 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 an it's another and as an engineer i think you'll appreciate it i think you'll i think it'll appeal to your uh just your way of thinking on things. And it was, it was a good take. Yeah. I, I, uh, that is on my list and I'll probably pick it up here in the holidays when I visit my, my dad, he, uh, get, he liked it. Get, so. it from your, get it from your dad because I don't think it's available anymore. It's off Amazon. It's like, no. uh, it's gone. <laughs> yeah. It's gone they're now. They're it's trying to so shut them up or something. It's, yeah, they don't. it's so strange. It's so strange. All right, Jeff. Well, well, thank you so much. Uh, enjoyed talking Bitcoin with you and, and look yeah, uh, forward to these conversations in the future. Sounds good. Thanks, Mike. See ya. Thank you for listening to the Mike White Podcast. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Mike White Pod and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Y'all have a great day.